State of Exception. This is a One School for All and, um, lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, uh, that I want you to watch by the 4th of September, next next Tuesday. So I just want to go through some of the assumptions that, um, that Agamben assumes you know all about, um, about the State of Exception. And that means we have to go back to antiquity. We need to go back to the Greeks and we need to go back to the Romans. First of all, the Greeks then. Um, essentially what happened was um, everyone seemed to agree that democracy is a terrible way of making war. Um, we discover this uh, the, the hard way, or at least the Athenians discovered this the hard way. The Athenians were dem and Democrats or, or had a democracy and they were in, at war against the Spartans who had an, or an oligarchy, the, the, basically a, a little bit like aristocracy, a rule of the few, certainly not a democracy. And um, this is a few decades after the Persian War that you might have heard of from the film um, 300. And, um, and the Athenians vote to send um, an excursion against the, uh, or send some warships against Syracuse, which is held by the um, Spartans. Um, they make this decision, um, the, the ship goes out, and whilst it's, um, whilst it's there, um, some other democratic processes are going on. Um, and the general, who was a complete genius, a bit of a bastard, but a complete genius general, um, is actually um, subpoenaed. So that means he has to come back and face trial back in Athens, whilst he's obviously on this in this big military excursion. And of course, if democracy being a democracy, he can't just say, no, I'm not going to do this. He has to go back. So back Alcibiades comes, um, and as it happens, he affects the spot. Um, disappears and um, doesn't face trial and it doesn't go through anyway. But the point is, the whole um, the whole excursion, the whole the whole military um, attempt has been destroyed by this um, democratic wavering, basically. So people could vote for and then change their mind and vote against. And the idea of, and, and what happened, you still had a new general, they voted a new general, but it just wasn't as good as the ideas. And they've wasted so much time and so much of the effort uh, that the final, um, the final excursion against Sparta was a disaster. And most people then blamed this wavering back and forth. And they decided that in order to um, wage war, you basically need to give somebody some kind of authority to just take decisions independently of democracy. Democracy is great, but there are some situations in which we don't really want to make our decisions democratically. And for that reason, um, most um, foreign ministers and most um, presidents or leaders, heads of state, they have uh, a great deal of um, delegated power when it comes to issues of, um, of warfare. Um, yeah, so they came back. And everything went terribly now uh, from the demons that one spoiler alert, start a wind for the war. Um we soon have a similar situation in Rome in um soon I say shortly before we had the same situation in Rome um in year four hundred and fifty eight, completely unrelated to the Athens Sparta situation. Um this the situation was that um some towns or some areas just outside Rome um had come under attack and um and the citizens of Rome um, need to make some kind of um, military response to this situation. And Cincinnatus is called upon, um, and yes, the name Cincinnati of the state does come from his name, but it's complicated. Um, Cincinnatus is called upon. He is out plowing his fields and being a good farmer, of course, because Romans are meant to be good farmers. And um, he puts aside his um, plow, declares a state of emergency. Um, and essentially commands people as a dictator, and they actually use this Latin word, dictator, um, and gets dictatorial powers for a very short period of time, takes all these people out, gives them spears and weapons and everything, go out, um, solves the military problem, defeats the enemy, and then goes back to his field. And the going back to his the field is why he is, um, why he is a famous um, hero because he does not keep his dictatorial power. So essentially you've got um, a, a pattern forming here that um, when a crisis is identified, somebody is given dictatorial powers, so powers that they shouldn't really have in a democracy, powers to command people when people shouldn't necessarily be commanded, when they're, when they're um, citizens they shouldn't be commanded over, they should be asked or they should decide themselves. But then this, all this power is completely limited. This is called a state of emergency, so you've got to actually de define it as a crisis first. 
um, and, and once it is a crisis, you've got exceptional power. So democratic power is um, is put to one side. It's also sometimes called martial law, and this is why you would sometimes see um, in in the past in ten or twenty years um, we have had lots of um, lots of affairs that we would ordinarily think of as being an executive um, issue being called a, a war against something, war against drugs for example. Um, it's a way of declaring martial law to release exceptional powers or terror legislation um, where terrorism, terrorists are by definition not a foreign state um, so that means that the government will have exceptional powers. But it has to be limited so that is the grammar of the state of exception that Agamben assumes you know all about. And it's based on some kind of crisis, whether it be terrorism or, um, or military um, situation. Or Agamben actually says these crises can sometimes be defined as crises, even though they're just economic crises. Um, and, um, and, and somebody is given extra, extraordinary powers, uh, but these are meant to be limited. Now, there are lots of different ways of putting this into play in European um, legal history. Um, a particular discussion is whether these, um, this dictatorial power is completely unlimited, whether the dictator can do whatever they want, or whether it's just very limited, you've got this power. Either way, civil rights and um, civil liberties are usually um, put aside. Um, so there's always some kind of stretching of, um, of normal um, dem democracy. Um, but um, but there are discussions as to how um, disaster, how um, exceptional it, it should be or whether it should be regulated. And a good example of this is in um, in this situation: are these soldiers or are they um, policemen? Because um, police um, are meant to be um, a normal part of um, citizen life. We can discuss that, of course. And the soldiers are meant to be a part of uh, military um, um, affairs. When um, after the Charlie Hebdo affair, a um, state of except, uh, state of emergency was declared in France, um, which gave the police extra powers and gave particular powers of stopping and, and checking people's passports and things. Uh, and um, and since then, politicians have been promising to stop it down. Macron himself um, claimed that he would um, he would stop the state of emergency when he came to power. He didn't. It was actually extended um, under his whilst he was under his presidency. When it did actually close on the in, on the first of November two thousand and seventeen. Um, a lot of human rights groups actually claimed that um, not only had these state of emergencies and this state these uh, emergency powers been used to close down um, close down civil rights protests and legal um, peace protests during that time, but also that the laws that have been put into place to replace the state of exception were so stringent that you might as well talk uh, talk about it as some kind of dictatorial state anyway. Uh, there are zones of exception so that police still have these powers in particular areas around airports and borders. So what have, we, what have we got here? We've got this grammar of exception. Um, we've got this, um, and, and strictly speaking, it's meant to be limited. If it becomes unlimited, it's basically dictatorial. And again, when wants to put it, um, look at that and, and basically wants to claim that in the middle of um, European democracies, there is this little um, core of um, core of dictatorship. We're kind of we we've. We've looked around it, and we've and we've and we've um, put some conditions around it, but it's still there's this this core of dictatorship in all modern democracies, and he claims that ultimate sovereignty is the power to decide when the state of emergency is triggered.